Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gay From Scratch, and uh, today we're talking about ray tracing, and it's an amazing way we've come with this, because way back in the day, when I first got my first 386, I remember installing Pavray on it and rendering like a checkerboard chrome cube over a period of like three hours or four hours, and ever since, I've been kind of hooked on the subject of ray tracing. Well, what we're looking at today is Light Tracer that runs in your browser client side and does the same thing that you used to require a Cray supercomputer to do. Basically, it's an experimental G GPU ray tracer for the web. Once again, completely client side, you need to have a Firefox or a Chrome browser to make use of it. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, you just head on over to lighttracer.org uh, light and click the try it now link. Now, if you're gonna want some information on configuring your web browser, also click right here. And another thing you will notice in this particular example, I am using their scene files, which are available right here in demo scenes. But that's it. If you're interested, click that try it now and you will end up here. And what you're seeing is a scene slowly being red traced. Now this one is actually pretty complex because it's using a light, uh, sorry, a, um, a glass bottle in the scene. And when light interacts with glass, there's quite a few refractions, bounces, and so on. So what you see here is it's calculating over time. Over here, you'll see the number of bounces that are being configured. So we've got seven bounces are going per ray. So for every ray of light in the scene, when it hits a surface, it is going to bounce off until it hits another surface. Then it will continue to go until it hits another one, tracking up to seven bounces. And that is going to greatly increase the end quality of the work you get because it's going to have a lot more lighting and detail precision to work with. However, it's going to slow things down. So what this is, is again, a fairly um, complicated surface. You've got curving and bending and so on in it. We'll let it keep calculating. In the meantime, I'll kind of show you around the interface. Over here, you've got um, details for manipulating, moving around the scenes, the geometry in the scene. I'm not gonna do that yet because it'll ruin my ray trace that's going on. Uh, down here, you've got controls over the camera. Also, again, that uh, maximum bounces or basically detail um, of the ray trace is available down here. Over here, you've got the material editor, uh, which unfortunately does not seem to support um, textures at this point in time. You can control and create matte, metal, glossy, glass, paint, and custom materials. Custom does not include a texture map option, and hopefully that is added. You can also create uh, emissive light surfaces, so if you wanted to create a label with a light, say you had a, a lamp and you created a light bulb, you can turn that light bulb into a light source by making an emissive material out of it. Also, you can define your own light sources. You know, you see right here we're using environment mapping, so we got this panoramic map right here. You can go ahead and load your own, but this is giving an overall scene lighting, um, like HDRI maps, if, you, if you're familiar with that subject. And over down here, you can create your own light sources. So there is a red light source in this scene. So you're seeing now though, our, our scene is getting more and more realistic. We're not even at that seven bounces yet, but now you can see you've got real refractions going on based off the surface. You've got uh, the transparency of the glass surface coming into play here. Um, so I'm just gonna pause and let it actually finish its thing. Okay, there we go. A couple of minutes later and it appears to be done. Now, in case you're curious, I'm using a 1080 GPU uh, and uh, Chrome OS in this particular case. And you see there's still a little bit of artifacting here and you could get rid of that by basically uh, increasing the number of bounces up even more. Uh, but you can see the results are actually quite pretty. So if this is your scene and you want to go ahead, you're happy with the results, you come up here to the little hamburger, uh, click save image like so, and I believe it's already calculated, so it should just dump that out for a file to download. Let's see what it does. Yep, there we go. So it just saved that image. You can go ahead and open it up right there. And there is your final ray traced result. Pretty sweet, uh, pretty simple, pretty easy to work with. Now you're noticing it starts over again. It's doing its rendering thing all over again. So with that in mind, we can now manipulate the scene. We can move things around. We can shimmy and manipulate the scene. We can grab objects in the scene. You'll notice with objects selected, we can move things around. And every time you tweak something or move something, it's going to start the process all over again, as you can see going on right here. So to give you a little bit more detail, we've got the geometry editor over here. We can use this to translate, rotate, and scale our object. We can clone it. Uh, we can get some geometric or geometry info of our particular scene, but this is not an authoring tool. You ultimately use something like Max Maya or Blender uh, and export an either OBJ or GLB, which is GLTF format and binary format for that file format. And those two, especially wavefront object format is supported by everything under the sun. Uh, so what you do is you create your, your geometry and your scene and stuff that way, and you export it out accordingly. In order to bring things in, it's super simple. You can either go up here and go to 
import, which by the way, only works in Chrome, does not work in Firefox. Or you can go ahead and grab uh, the scene files, which again are linked right here off the main page. Go down here and you can download these files right here uh, or your own files, of course. Uh, and just simply grab them from Explorer or Finder or whatever and dump it in the browser. Now, this is going to take a second because it's obviously loading up, in that case, a 5 megabyte file. Uh, the other ones are like 35 and 60. But there you go. Here you see the end result. Uh, this one I've kind of meshed with and it's saving it on the fly. So let me just turn my light off here. So I have a red light in the scene that I created, which is making it look really, really ugly. So let's get rid of that guy completely. Uh, actually, I'll just delete it. Here, we'll delete light, light out of the scene. And here we'll go back to what the way this was meant to be as opposed to the way it ended up being. So you can see it is a 3D ring in the world. What we can do is come up here. We can select the object. You'll see it's selected over here. Uh, we got over here, we got the option right now. It's a metal um, map thing. You can see the, uh, the roughness of the metal material. So if we want to change out the way that it renders, we can jack the roughness way up and your metal is going to look more coarse as a direct result of that or burnished or bron or however you want to call it. You'll also notice you've got uh, different options or different um, interfaces for how uh, surfaces will look. We could also turn this into a glass surface, for example. Um, we could turn it into a matte sample. Uh, and you've got different values for each one. So if we wanted it to be paint, come in here. We set the diffuse paint color of it. So let's go ahead and make this a red diffuse. And that should update on the fly. Give that a second. Okay, so we're broken into different pieces, but you can see the end result up there. Uh, you can use the uh, left mouse button to do orbit, like so. Middle mouse button to zoom in and out, although it is actually reversed from the way I would expect it to be. Um, I don't know why. Uh, and then right mouse button really does nothing, actually. So that's how you can navigate and move around in your scene. You see over here, we've got different camera options. So we can switch here back to a pinhole camera, for example. And that gives you just two options, focal length and sensor height. So we can move it this way. Ah, we can move it that way. Or we could switch this guy back over to a thin lens camera. And there you see you've got things like lens F um, number, sensor height, focal length. Uh, blades number, focus distance. Now, I am not a camera guy. I, this stuff means very little to me. Uh, I, I used to remember exactly what, for example, the F number in cameras was all about, but um, I, I haven't used this stuff in a long time. So, yeah, uh, that's on you to research. Lesson for the reader, I guess we'll call it. At the same time, you can go ahead and add light sources into your scene. You can change out from an environment map to use a gradient map for the background light sourcing, like so. You can change out your gradient. Or you can add a light into the scene, either a distant light or a spherical light. Now, when I added the spherical light, it kind of crashes. So I'm going to stick with distant. I actually had one before that you saw. So we come in here, we could add a, let's add a, a neon green light to our scene. Change the FOV angle up like so. And that should interface with our scene. So now you're going to see the green light influencing our scene as a result. And yeah, that's kind of that, at least surface level, that's what it's all about. It's a really cool program for, you know, playing around with ray tracing. I don't know um, that I, I would use it for anything, but I do, I, I'm just simply amazed by the fact that we could get uh, this performance of ray tracing, hardware accelerated in a web browser in this day and age, whereas even just five years ago, 10 years ago, this was like way beyond reach of anything we could imagine for, um, you know, the run again, a browser anyway. So maybe, maybe more like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but it's staggering just how far ray tracing has actually come. Now, one thing I should probably point out right now, because real time ray tracing is such a buzzword, this does not require, um, RTX cards or hardware. Like I said, this is running on a 1080 GPU. This could be running on a, um, just about anything. You can actually even run it on integrated graphics GPU. Now I would be interested though, if one of you guys out there has real time ray tracing hardware, an RTX um, 2060, 2070 or 2080, and you run this, let me know what the performance is like for you. Is it rendering a whole lot faster because of that technology? Or is it basically 20 to 30% faster because that's how much faster a 2080 GTX, RTX is versus a 1080. I'd be curious to see if you get a huge speed increase here because of that RTX hardware or if it does nothing at all. Another thing to keep in mind, if you are going to check this guy out, do be sure to come into Chrome colon slash slash flags, search for angle.
angle and then change the angle back end to run on OpenGL. Now, not in every case does this make sense and you may wanna uh, go back to defaults when you're done. But in this particular case, you will find that it actually runs uh, quite a bit faster with that feature changed. So uh, switching it and forcing it to use um, GL on the back end instead of D3D9 or D3D11, since it's using WebGL to OpenGL or whatever, it does seem to perform quite a bit faster. And once again, that is one of their optimization tricks. So if you come back here and right below the launch button, you will find how to configure your web browser. Check that out for some details on getting up and starting. Uh, but the one that really kind of mattered is uh, use your discrete graphics and enable OpenGL. And that does make a bit of a difference. So do be sure to check that out. So again, I, I don't see a whole lot of direct use for this in you guys' lives, but it, nonetheless, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a fun toy. It costs you nothing. It's available in your browser. So there's very little um, overhead to check it out. So at least hopefully like six or seven or eight or 30 or a hundred of you are at least kind of interested in this. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later.